Well, good evening, everyone. <laughs> Voice from behind me. Welcome to Celebrate Recovery North here at Fountain City United Methodist Church. What a great day it was today, huh? A little uh, like summer-esque, and then it's going to get cold again. Welcome to East Tennessee. Yep. But we're here at Fountain City United Methodist Church. We're going to get started, and uh, Lauren's going to sing a song about being brave tonight. So uh, let's stand up, and let's get into it. Oh 
Let's try again. Hello, family. Hey, I'm a beloved child of God, and I struggle with codependency, and my name is Jen. Hey, y'all. I'm so glad to see you. It's so nice to be here on a Tuesday night. Um, if it is your first night tonight, we are especially happy that you walked in the door. So thank you for honoring us with your presence and for trusting us, and we want to honor you as well. Let me tell you a few things about Celebrate Recovery um, as we get started. First of all, Celebrate Recovery is a 12-step program, biblically-based, faith-based program of recovery for anybody that deals with anything that is um, preventing you from living your life. And that pretty much is all of us. And so this program is for all of us. So thanks for, for being here. Um, and we want you to know, um, especially if you're here for the first time, that this is a safe place. It's a safe place to be. It's a family. It's a judgment-free zone. And we really guard that safety. And one of the things we say um, every week to help us re remind ourselves is that is that the things that happen here are confidential. We respect your anonymity. And so what you see here and what you hear here needs to stay here. Thanks. We take that really seriously. And that goes for what happens here in this service. And that goes for what happens in the share groups. That goes what happens in the hallways. It's all anonymity and confidentiality. Got it? Great. Okay. Um, something else that we take seriously around here is celebrating our recovery. So at the end of our service tonight, we'll have an opportunity to recognize some folks who have reached um, a particular milestone in their recovery. So be thinking about if that's you tonight and be ready for that when that, when that comes. Um, another thing to keep in mind is at the end of our service tonight, after the, after the service is over, we will have open share groups. It's really a really important part of what we do and an important part of the Celebrate Recovery program are our open share groups. And they're listed behind me on the screen. We have men and women's chemical dependency, men's sexual integrity, family support group for, for women, and women and men's codependency groups. So you can see where the room numbers are on the sign. They're all up and down this hallway here, and there are signs outside the doors that are supposed to be helpful if you can see them. Um, and then anybody who's standing around out there that kind of looks like they know what they're doing, just ask if you can't find the room, okay? But I really encourage you to go and make a friend, um, hear a story, and maybe begin to open up and share yours. Um, we also have an opportunity on Sunday mornings here um, for worship. If you all um, are looking for a place to be on Sunday mornings, don't have a church home or would like to find out what having a church home feels like, um, we'd love to invite you here. So we have both contemporary service that meets in this space and also a traditional service which meets down the hall in the sanctuary. So the traditional service times are 8.30 and 11, and then the journey contemporary service meets in this space at 11. And in between those times, we have a 9.45 hour where there are small groups. So if you want to come and participate in a small group during that time, um, that opportunity is available as well. Um, as always, we have an offering. It's up here in the basket near the stage. Um, if you have it to give, we would gladly take it and, and help us to help support the ministry. If you don't have it, please don't worry about it. The most important thing is you just keep coming back and blessing us with your presence and participation. Um, also want to make sure that you know that we have children's programming and child care available on uh, Tuesday nights. And, and when we have step study, we always have child care for step study as well. So not having a place for your kiddos should never be a barrier for you or for anybody that you know for coming and, and taking part. So be aware of that. We do ask that you pick up your kiddos promptly by 830 at the end of share group time so we can honor and respect our child care workers' times. time. Ah, this is the most important announcement of all. We have a new step study coming up. Woo! I know some of you have been waiting for this, and um, the time is coming. So March 1st, which, if I'm correct, is a week from tomorrow. Is that right? Yeah, so the time is drawing near. There uh, is a sign-up sheet out in the hallway um, near the entrance to the building, and if you have an opportunity um, or if you're thinking about uh, that, please talk to somebody. You will be convinced, and uh, if you come talk to me, I will convince you uh, that it's the it's the best decision you can make it's life-changing really encourage you to consider that and to give it a try so that's coming up a week from it's it's it'll be on Wednesday nights okay um, I think that's it um, 
if we will just uh, pray together and then we'll, we'll, we'll continue on in our service. So let's just get quiet and get centered and get focused. <clears throat> Father, thank you for being here with us and providing this place and these people and this time. I would just ask that you would help us to become fully present in this moment, to become um, able to let down our guard a little bit, to open ourselves up to the possibility that we could leave here different than when we walked in. Father, I ask that you would bless our time together, that you would allow your Holy Spirit to move among us, to move through the music and the words and the testimony and our fellowship with each other so that we can be healed, so that we can grow in our understanding of you, and so that we can love and encourage each other. It's in your son's name that I pray all of these things. Amen. Hello. I am a child of God, and my name is Prudence, and um, I struggle with drugs and alcohol. <laughs> and I'm going to read the 12 steps, and you guys are going to follow along with the biblical, biblical comparis comparisons. So I hope I can see this from here. All right. Step one. We admitted we were powerless over our addictions and compulsive behaviors and that our lives have become unmanageable. Step two, we came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. Step three, we made a decision to turn our lives and our wills over to the care of God. Step four, we made a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves. And step five, we admitted to God, to ourselves, and to another human being the exact nature of our wrongs. Step six, we were entire, entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. Step seven, we humbly asked him to remove all of our shortcomings. Step eight, we made a list of all persons we had harmed and we became willing to make amends to them all. Step nine, we made, a direct, we made direct amends to such people whenever possible, except when to do so would injure them or others. Step 10, we continued to take personal inventory and when we were wrong, promptly admitted it. Step 11, we sought through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God, praying only for knowledge of his will for us and the power to carry that out.
And step 12, having had a spiritual experience as a result of these steps, we try to carry this message to others and to practice these principles in all of our affairs. All right, let's stand back up. We're going to sing some more. The sunny and the rock, water in the stone.
Did y'all catch that? Some, something just happened a minute ago. Did you see it? My microphone didn't work. <laughs> now does it work? There we go. Y'all saw what happened just now, didn't you? It went from like level two to like level 12. You know what I mean? <clears throat> That's good stuff, man. Welcome to Celebrate Recovery North. Jesus loves you. Amen. 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 You, you need to know that whether you feel it, whether you know it or not, it's true. And there's nothing you can do about it. Sorry. Um, I, I am a grateful believer in Jesus Christ and my struggles with drugs and alcohol, and my name is Seth. And we're glad you joined us, man. Every, every Tuesday night's a big night, right? If, even if you've been here like every week for like years and you're just, you know, oh, we're having casserole again. I mean, it's a big night, man. It's better than the night you had in the other life, though, isn't it? Right? What was you eating ramen noodles and a piece of bread with some peanut butter on it if you're lucky? It's a good night. It's a good night tonight. Uh, quickly, annou announcement. The step study, which Jennifer uh, so kindly reminded, is so short. Uh, it's coming up upon us. Wow, it's, it's coming up. Uh, the way you enter for the step study, if you've signed up, I want to make this announcement two weeks in a row so that, so that we can, um, if you're not here next week, you'll hear it too. Anyways, the back side of the building, if you come up behind the duck pond, it's the second door. There'll be a big sign out there that tells you where to enter. But just know that that's where you'll come in on Wednesday night uh, when we start that step study. So hopefully you signed up. If not, get in there tonight because it's filling up. I think we had... 10 or t 10 people signed up last week, so that puts us at like 40 people signed up. God is good, man. So for tonight, I think I had a different plan, but I think what God, God is leading me to do is uh, sometimes we get so busy in the uh, things that don't really matter that we forget about the basics of recovery. And so my hope is that we can take starting tonight and, and, and just take a journey through the 12 steps. And as the title is, says, God's help, right? We need God's help, but we're going to take God's help through the 12 steps. So that's going to be like a, I don't really have the plan yet. We'll see what happens. It might last five weeks. It might last, hey, it might take a whole year. Who knows? But bear with me. Just keep coming back. Now, this question I'm asking is, it determines a lot about punctuation and the tone you say it in. What is the point in life? But what if you say it like this, what's the point in life? That's a, whole different, that's a whole different statement, isn't it? Sometimes you get to that and you're like, man, what is the point in life? Like you're ready to give up. But then there's some, some the way I want you to read it tonight is, what is the point in life? What, what is the point? We, we go through our whole life and sometimes we don't even figure out the point in our life. What, why do we do, why do we do what we do? What's, what's life all about, and what are we supposed to do with it? You ever think of that? You ever ask yourself that question? You ever ponder that? Um, I don't think we do that enough, but if, you don't, if you've never done that or asked yourself that question, I think it's natural that we go into that place in our mind where we just question what is life, what is the point in life, what do we do in life, um, but the problem is we get those thoughts and we turn, return back to our normal routine and we, we turn right back to our normal life and then we are blinded by the everyday things we face and then 10, 20, 30 years down the road, we sit and we say, what happened in life? What was life about? All I, all I remember is that I worked, came to celebrate recovery and worked and went to bed and worked but what's the point in life? Well, I'm going to share a little video with you. There's a famous sermon. Now, I don't know if you know who John Piper is, but there's a sermon he did in 2000. Now, don't, don't say Seth is promoting John Piper's theology. I'm not going to put that out there. But I'm saying this sermon is famous and there's a reason for it. I want to share it with you. And the title of his sermon 
it was at the Passion Conference. You probably know what that is. Now it's like Louis, Louis Giglio in Atlanta. But the title of his sermon is Don't Waste Your Life. Pretty good. Don't Waste Your Life. And it's very powerful. So I, I got a clip. Some of y'all, this looks like your dad. Here we go. Turn If you can turn it up a little bit. So you got to feel bad for Bob and Penny, man. Bob and Penny were the people he was talking about. And they just thought they were on top of the world in this Reader's Digest uh, article. And then, but, but the point in that is, um, what did Bob and Penny do in their life? Ended up collecting shells. If anybody's collecting shells, man, you're cool. I promise you, that's cool, man. Collecting shells is not a problem. Like, we're not trying to get you to quit collecting shells. And, you know, that... that that point that he's making is not necessarily our problem in this room. I don't know that we have the problem of the American dream in this room. I, I, I don't, I mean, I'm pretty sure of the room I walked into, but the point is that we, we miss out on our life because we get so blinded by things that don't really matter in the end. And I know we're not the Bob and Penny type of people, and if you are, you're cool, you're welcome here. Um, I'm not sure that seashell collections and early retirement is in our future. I mean, it might be. But it's not what landed us in a blue chair on Tuesday night. I mean, the seashell collection and the early retirement didn't land you in the blue chair. And so what I want you to know is that although that tragedy is different than ours, maybe, we can find the same tragedy on the other side of that dream life. And that's how many of us uh, uh, enter the, the rooms like this, is on the other side of that American dream life. And the brokenness, the, the bondage, the, the trap that we're in, whatever your struggle is, or whatever you don't know your struggle is, if, if we continue living that, that way, we'll find ourselves 10, 20 years down the road waking up wondering what happened to our life, wondering how did I get here? Where did my life go? What was the point in that life? If we don't surrender our lives to a power and a plan that is greater than ourselves, we'll end up with so many questions about our life and what was the point in our life. And the mess Here's what I want you to hear. Like, if you're like, nah, that's not going to be me, man. Well, the mess that we make of our life that we're in, um, whether you want to admit it or not, you, 
you know, part of our life is a mess. That's why we show up. But what happened, that doesn't magically disappear. It doesn't just, you know, time doesn't heal that. You don't get the right job and that goes away. It's not like you wake up one day and life all of a sudden is better. That's not how it works. So what are we supposed to do with it? What are we supposed to do with the mess? I'm not telling you how your life is, but what, is the, what, is, what are we supposed to do with the mess we've made with our life? I'm glad you asked, but I don't have the answer to it. I guess you can go collect seashells, seashells, if, I mean, that might work. I don't know. Poor Bob and Penny, man. I feel for them, man. Like, I want to I wanna reach out to them. Um, but what do we do with that life? I don't have the answer, but even if I did have the answer, it's a very difficult question to answer. What do we do with our life? Instead of trying to answer that question, I want to, I want to do a little experiment together. You're gonna to have to get a little vulnerable and put. You have to put down your phones, or it won't work. Let's take a few moments together and let's just do a dream. Let's let's do a dream um, in your seat tonight. And I want you to close your eyes. Just participate, okay? You don't. It's not goofy. Just close your eyes. Nobody's gonna do anything to you. Close your eyes and, and, and get, get centered in your space. And to do this, you have to be really honest with yourself. You really have to be honest. And that's up to you. I can't make you do that. But I want, I want you to, as your eyes are closed and as you're, you're in your imagination, I want you to think about everything in your life that has led you to this place right now. A snapshot of everything that's led you here. And now, with that snapshot, where you're at, I want you to envision the rest of your life going forward in that same direction that got you to this, this point right now. So your life, the journey of your life, from where you've been to where you are now, and then I want you to imagine 10 years from now. And sit with that for a minute. Just sit with that image of what your life is going to look like in 10 years. Going in the same direction you're going right now. And now while you sit with that image, I want to read a scripture to you. As you imagine your life 10 years from now, I want you to hear this scripture. It's John 10.10. 10. And Jesus says, I have come so that they may have life and have it in abundance. Okay, you can open your eyes now. That ab abundant life is something that we don't really always think about, but it's what Jesus says he has come so that we may have life, but not just life, life in abundance. Amen. And that means that it, Life is not just seashells and early retirement. It, maybe it is, but it means gaining a different perspective on life, a heavenly perspective on life. And, and we gain that perspective, that different view of our life by learning who God is, knowing who God is, and trusting God more than we trust anything else. It means growing. Abundant life means growing in a life that is full of love, joy, peace, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, fruits of the Spirit. Now the question is, was, was your image of your life 10 years from now abundant life? Was it, was it full of peace, love, joy, faithfulness, kindness, self-control? If you kept on the same track you're on now. I don't know about you, but when I first came into cellular recovery, I had no idea what abundant life was. I, I didn't know. I never even thought about it. Like, what is abundant life? I'm just trying to make it through, man. I'm just trying to get from week to week, day to day. But I showed up because my life was pretty much the opposite of abundant. It was empty. It was, it was useless. It was hopeless. And there was nothing of abundance except for pain and misery and depression and poor me's. 
and I don't know why you showed up, but the chances are similar. Hopefully you've grown and you've changed, but if you're like me, the hopelessness that, that I felt outweighed everything else in my mind. There was, there was little that compared to the hopelessness that I felt. But here's what I want you to know as we begin this journey together through the 12 steps. It doesn't matter what you've done in your life. It doesn't matter what you've done in your past. It doesn't matter what got you in here. You can recover. You can recover and you can have an abundant life. See, somebody showed up tonight just because they showed up. They, they had no hope of ever recovering. But I'm, I want you to know that you can recover and you can have an abundant life in recovery. There's many ways that we get here. You, you got here different than I got here. You got here different than I got here. We all get here different ways. But there's only one way we can get out. There's only one way out of the hundreds of ways we get in, there's only one way we can get out. And for us, the way out is through the 12 steps and the program of recovery. And, and by taking those 12 steps and that program of recovery, what happens is we begin taking a path in our own lives where we find the answers to the questions about life. We find the answers to the questions that we wondered about, where we should be, how it should look. And it's okay because when I began this journey, I didn't know how it worked. Most, most of us didn't know, have a clue how this thing worked. We just knew that we could not continue living like we were. That pain led us to a place where we were willing to do anything else but what we were doing. And that's a good place. The uh, big book of AA tells it like this. If you've ever read the big book, if you hadn't, it's a great resource. It says like this on page 58. The only thing we have to have is if you've decided you want what we have and are willing to go to any length to get it, then you're ready to take certain steps. Who's ready for that tonight? Have you had enough of that other life? Are you ready to have an abundant life that, that is accessible to you? And if you're ready for that, guess what? You've arrived at step one. And that says, we admitted we were powerless of our addictions and compulsive behaviors and that our lives have become unmanageable. If you've arrived at a place where you say, I I'm willing to do whatever I have to do to get a life like that, then you've arrived at a place where you can admit you're powerless and that some part of your life has become unmanageable. So, Congratulations. You've admitted you're the problem. Hopefully you admitted that. You've admitted you're the problem and that you can't fix the problem by yourself. That's step one. You don't overcomplicate it. Don't, don't, don't overcomplicate it. Just, it's all about honesty. If you overcomplicate it, you'll lose the honesty in it. The honesty is I'm the problem and I can't fix the problem. And that's... At that point, that's about as much as required out of you for the rest of the 12 steps. So your only responsibility, in a sense, moving forward is to get out of the way and quit screwing things up. I know it, just, it doesn't make sense, but it's true. Or as I was told one point, your responsibility moving forward is to shut up and listen. I mean, that's what I was told. That might be harsh for you tonight, but... That's what I was told. Be quiet and listen. I've had enough of hearing what you have to say. The program, here's what the deal is. The program of recovering the 12 steps begins in a way that, that helps us come to terms with the reality that we're in. It's the reality that no matter how desperate we are to fix our problems, the only thing we will end up doing is making our problems worse. And it, what that's saying, recovery is saying that to begin, we have to admit and accept exactly what Paul is saying in Romans chapter 7. You've heard this, this scripture, but this is exactly where we begin, is what Paul writes in Romans chapter 7. 
verse 18, then I'm going to do verse 21 through 25. For I know that nothing good lives in me. That's the wrong version, but that is in my sinful nature. For I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. We read that every week. Let's keep reading. Verse 21. So I find this law at work. Although I want to be good, evil is right there with me. For in my inner being, I delight in God's law. But I see another law at work in me, waging war against the law of my mind and making me a prisoner of the law of sin at work within me. What a wretched man I am. Who will rescue me from this body that is subject to death? Thanks be to God who delivers me through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then I myself in my mind am a slave to God's law, but in my sinful nature a slave to the law of sin. That is a very complex version of step one. I mean, how many times have you tried and tried and tried and tried to change your life, but you end up continuing and continuing to do the wrong things? I know that's true for me. Got a couple of honest people tonight. Good. But... But it's not just us. Paul is saying this. Paul, you know that guy, wrote most of the New Testament. He's saying, man, it's me too. You know, he's saying that I can try my best to do what's right, but there's something in me that just won't let me do it all the time. And so he's crying out in frustration over the inability to stop sinning, even though he wanted to. That ring a bell, right? See where he called himself a wretched man, man. How many of you call yourself a wretched man or woman? That's what Paul says. And then he asks, who will deliver me from this body of death? Who's going to rescue me? Whatever that struggle is, either a relationship or a, a hang-up or a habit, it's frustrating because you try to do what's right and you can't. And that frustration is what led me it finally led me to the end of myself, and by a process of elimination, I had no other options. It led me to seeking the help of God. I admit that I looked for every other way, but I finally had no other options but to ask God for help. And it's that inability to do the right thing on my own that somehow amazingly forced me into faith and into trusting God, trusting a God that I never knew, couldn't see, couldn't touch. It was pure faith. I had to trust that God. What became my only option, it might be your only option, if you didn't know it is your only option. I'm just, just secret there. But it's to choose the faith and the trust. And it's to choose the faith and the trust that Paul answers in this scripture. Who's going to rescue me? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord is our only answer. It's our only answer. It is the answer. It's the rescue that we need. But, but when you looked at your life in that 10-year vision, it's scary to think that if we don't allow God to take over our life, that that 10-year vision will change. Imagine you running your life for 10 more years. Woo! No thanks. So what Paul understands, what we need to understand is that the only thing, person that can save of is, is God. God is the only thing that can save a person from himself. And God does that through faith in Jesus Christ. That's something I had to learn, but that's something I learned in recovery. I didn't learn that in church. I didn't go to church and learn that. I mean, I really didn't. Maybe you did. That's fine. That's what church should be teaching. But I didn't learn that in church. I learned that through the 12 steps. The first two steps actually taught me that. One and two taught me that only God can release a person from their slavery to sin by his grace through faith in Jesus Christ. Steps one and two. Amazing. Taught me that. And I learned that if I try to recover on my own, by my own strength, by my own efforts, by my own thinking, I was doomed. That you're doomed if that's your plan. Please keep coming back so you can adjust that plan. 
So what it's saying is that we must follow God and let him take over the position of director of our lives. And we must learn to listen and follow his way. Listen and follow his way. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read something from the big book one more time. I don't do this often, but well, I didn't give you that scripture. Here we go. Here's what the big book says, and it's so important that we know this. There often seems no way of entirely getting rid of self without his aid. Many of us had moral and philosophical convictions galore, but we could not live up to them even though we would have liked to. Neither could we reduce our self-centeredness much by wishing or trying on our own power. We had to have God's help. We had to have God's help. I hope you know that tonight. There's no other way to get through this. We had to have God's help. And that's where step two comes in. If you can say, I have to have God's help, you've come to step two. It says, we came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. So step one says, man, I'm the problem and I can't fix it. If I try, I just keep making it worse. Step two says, I have to have God's help. You've worked step two if you can admit, I have to have God's help. Let's say it together. I have to have God's help. I have to have God's help. I have to have God's help. It's easy to forget that, especially when you start taking life over again. But I have to have God's help. And I hope that you lose sleep over that. I hope that that wakes you up in the middle of the night tonight and you can't get back to sleep because you're just sitting there thinking, why do you keep saying I have to have God's help? I hope it, 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 it changes your life. I hope you understand that my anything and everything is insufficient to help myself out of the problem I'm in. We have to have God's help. The only way we can have an abundant picture in that 10-year vision is with God's help. And the only way we can have God's help comes through a relationship with Jesus Christ. And the relationship with Jesus Christ is our only hope at living a spiritual, abundant life. So if you want that, if that's what your seashell and Punta Gorda, Florida vision is, is spiritual abundance. You have to have God's help. You have to have God's help. Worship team, you guys can come back up. The thing about the beginning of the 12 steps, that we're just in the beginning. We're just in the beginning. But it's teaching us that we, we have tried and tried and tried on our own and we have failed. The only option is we have to have God's help. But here's the joy about step one, two, and we'll talk about three next time. The only way we recover is going through that. The only way we can recover is going through that process. You have permission to wrestle with that. You have permission to fight against that. You have permission to doubt that in your own recovery. You have that permission. You, 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 have, you have the freedom to Get frustrated with that. You can, you can get frustrated at that. You won't always get this right. You won't always get right asking for God's help. And you won't always like it. You, you, can, you can get mad at it. You can doubt it. You can be frustrated at it. All you want. You have the freedom to do that. You have the permission to do that. But you won't be able to escape the fact that you have to have God's help if you have any chance of recovering. As much as you want to wrestle with it. You'll find a, a place in your life where you, you have to accept it. Hopefully it's now and not 10 years down the road. But trying to recover from our struggles and our past without God's help is like, let's see if you like this one, trying to train a silverback gorilla to be your house pet. It ain't gonna work. You're gonna continue getting beat up and beat up and beat up and beat up. Because you're not God, I'm not God. It's impossible to do what God can do for us. To tie this into last week's uh, 
scripture, Mark 10, remember we read Mark 10, verse 25, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than a rich man to go into heaven, but what about, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than it is to recover on your own strength. But let's keep reading. Jesus looked at them and said, with man, this is impossible, but not with God. All things are possible with God. Whatever you got in your life, whatever you're facing, whatever mountain you got to climb, whatever valley you're stuck in, it is possible with God. Do you believe that? Yeah. You got to believe it. You got to ask yourself, do I believe that? Do you believe that you can't do this on your own? I want you to wrestle with those questions throughout the week. I want you to think about it. Man, do I really believe that? Am I willing to try that? Because the next few weeks, I want us to dive into these 12 steps. And I want us to dive into it from a place knowing we need God's help. Not trying to figure it out on our own. Knowing that we need to God, God's help is the way we enter recovery. It's the only way we will recover. Tonight, I don't know what your struggle is. You might not know God. You might not want to know God. You might just be here because we had hash brown casserole and that's your favorite dish. I don't know. But maybe you heard something that, that rang, a, rang a bell in your life. Maybe you heard something that the spirit lifted in you and, and woke you up for a moment. This blue chip that we offer every week is not saying uh, I'm ready for God to take over my life. It's not saying that. It's saying that my life is not where it should be, not where I want it to be. That 10-year vision scared the heck out of me. And I'm ready to start doing something different. I don't know what it is yet. I don't understand it. But I'm willing to come up here and pick a blue chip up and say I'm ready. If that's you tonight, you can come up here as you are and pick this up. Who's willing to do that? Come here, man. Love you, bro. Hey, thank you, man. Love you, man. I love you. Yeah. Thank you, bro. Proud of you, man. Thank you. Love you, brother. Love you. God bless you. Love you, man. Yeah. Proud of you, brother. Thank you, bro. God bless you. Wow. Happy you doing? Good to see you, man. Love, love you, bro. God bless you, man. pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this place, this moment, these people, the Holy Spirit that is anointing in this room right now. God, we need your help. We, we so desperately need your help. You created us to need your help. Help us to realize that and accept that, that we are not you. We cannot be you. We are horrible versions of God and that we will make a mess out of a mess. But you will rescue us through Jesus Christ. You will send him in our lives through the Holy Spirit and save us from the mess that we have made. And you will, you promise us, God, you promise us that Jesus came, not so, not so that we may just have life, but we may have an abundant life full of the fruits of the Spirit. God, we trust you in your promise. We trust you at your word. 
Help us to accept that and accept your son Christ to be the director of our life, to be the guide to our recovery, and to be the strength, the power, and the ability to do what we have to do to find a way out of where we've got ourselves into. God, it's by your grace, it's by your power, it's by your strength, it's by your love that we are here. We thank you for that and we love you for that. We thank you and we love you for your son, Jesus Christ. And God, it's in his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Surely your goodness 
guys um let's give another hand to these people that use their god-given talent to help us worship i've seen a, a few people come up tonight and get a blue chip and i want to tell you every time a soul walks up here it just touches my heart because i was that person at one point and it uh my name is alicia by the way uh struggle with uh life and um i mean i was that person my heart was sinking to the floor and I have finally did it and Satan wants nothing more than to keep you bound and if anybody's thought twice you don't have to sit in that mess that he's trying to get you to stay in is anybody willing to come up here and get that shit Anybody else? Guys, we... Oh, we go. Amen. Amen. All right, guys, we still have these in share groups. I hope you guys will be willing to come and participate. We're going to go ahead and celebrate those that maybe either took a chip or... Um, decided to work on whatever their struggle is. Do we have anybody here tonight with 30 days?
How about 60 days? Ninety days. Nope. Six months. Nine months. Okay, what about one year? Do we have any years? Eighteen months. What about two years or more? Do we have any multiples in here? What did he say? Eighteen. Eighteen years, y'all. Pray that y'all go to the share group tonight if you if you have the ability to do so. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do the serenity prayer, and then the band will lead, lead us out with another song. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know. Make 